Nope. Yep. And then my camera too. <laughs> I'm going to be ready for a job at the BBC after this, I think. Isn't it just me? I mean, you've got enough tech going on there. It's probably not enough for a studio, in all fairness. <sighs> one of these days, one of these days. All right, I think that's everything uh, recording. So I'm going to synchronize the sound. And uh, here we go. Uh, I'll, I'll launch into my uh, introduction. No worries. Now, one of the signs of a great Scottish dis... No, yeah, see. <laughs> <clears throat> One of the signs of a great Scottish distillery is a powerful name. In many cases, the more difficult to pronounce the name of the distillery, the better the whisky coming from them. But this is not just a Scottish phenomenon. As whisky making spreads across the world, new distilleries with unique and complex names are coming to the fore. Supremely innovative and incredibly successful, Sweden's Makmura is a prime example of this. I'm on the line now with uh, Scotland's um, I'm on the line now with Macmura's Scottish ambassador, uh, Mickey Plummer. Mickey, how do you get on with these Swedish names? <laughs> it's um, uh, a bit difficult, to be honest with you, a bit difficult. Uh, but no, I, your pronunciation was spot on. Uh, <laughs> I tend to use an app on my phone if I'm not too sure of something. And my boss is really, really good at the pronunciation. Uh, so I listen to him say it quite a few times. So uh, <laughs> as the French say, a coup à la pète. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to probably for the rest of the interview try and say it a little bit quicker. We don't have time for the careful pronunciation, but if you're in the right vowel space somewhere up the close front. For sure. Yeah, Happy know. days with just a, a Mac Mira. That's fine. Mac Mira. Nice. Now, this is a question that I'm hoping is really going to date this interview. Sweden okay. is not a country that springs to mind when we think of whiskey making. So how long has whiskey making been a part of Sweden's history? So that's a, that's a good question, Sam. Uh, it's relatively new in terms of whiskey, really. Uh, the distillery actually turns 21 this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so not long at all. Uh, back in um, 1998, uh, a group of school friends uh, that went to university together to study engineering, uh, got, they have a yearly get together to, to keep in touch, etc. Uh, they go to a cabin uh, in Salem, uh, in Sweden, uh, for skiing. Uh, so that's obviously later on in the year. Uh, and they all brought a bottle of whiskey with them because they all liked whiskey. Mm. And over dinner, they actually sat around and said, why has nobody done a distillery in Sweden? Um, so that was in 1998. Uh, that conversation started. And the first, the first run of Macmillan uh, actually come off the stills in December of 99. So 21 years this year. Okay, so you're at that magic point where 20, 21 year old whiskey, the point where um, time has really worked itself. Uh, Mac Mira's sure. got there now. Yes, oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, but obviously, as you know, we, I mean, we don't really do age statement whiskey anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's yet, yet to be seen um, by, the, by the higher powers that be if we're going to release a 21 year old uh, to celebrate either later this year or early next year. So uh, I suppose that'll be down to Angela, our chief nosing officer or master distiller. Or master blender, should I say? Sorry. Ah, so exciting times. Hopefully, hopefully. I realised one thing I did was with the new setup, my uh, camera should be sharing a screen. Uh, no, my my script should. Uh, my, basically, my camera is sharing this whole screen, and that means now I can't right. see my script. So what I'm going <laughs> to do? <clears throat> well, I'm I'm going to alt tab out, and then you can focus the camera on me for every alt tab, and maybe do a bit of cutting. <laughs> Last week I wrote it down on a piece of paper, but I forgot to do that this time. So let's see. Mm -mm. Okay. So Macmira is totally a Swedish whiskey now. How much of it is locally sourced? 100%. Hmm. Everything from the water source, uh, the barley, uh, is from a couple of farms just up the road, not very far from the whiskey village at all. Uh, ev everything, our yeast, everything that we put into Macmillan, uh, everything you get in the bottle is Swedish. Fantastic. Um, so the, the, the casks as well? 
Casks, not so not all the casks, no. We do use Swedish oak uh, in some of our casks, our Svent Ek, which means Swedish oak. Mm -hmm. uh, the 10% of that makeup uh, is, is uh, virgin Swedish oak. Hmm. Uh, but obviously we, we use traditional casks as well. Uh, so ex bourbon, uh, ex sherry, etc., and some weird and wonderful ones like uh, cloudberry wine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so uh, and our latest uh, spring release, uh, our Grand Pé, uh green or green tea uh, in English. Uh, we actually seasoned uh, ex oloroso and ex bourbon casks uh, with uh, green tea. Uh, so we took some uh, took some oloroso. Uh, and mixed it with four different types of green tea uh, with the help of uh, a Japanese tea blender. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, and we seasoned, uh, seasoned some casks for, for a good couple of months. Uh, and that's our latest release, that's which is quite interesting. <clears throat> very interesting and exciting indeed. I would like to try that because I've not come across anything even close. But that actually leads me into something I wanted to ask that... In Scotland, we've been doing whiskey for a long time, but that means that a lot of rules and regulations have come up. They protect the industry and, you know, keep Scottish whiskey uh, strong, but it also can restrict a bit of innovation. So Macmira has a chance to do some things that we can't do in Scotland. Um, the green, Very much, yeah. the cloudberry wine. Are there any other things that uh, you find yourselves doing? Yes. Yeah, so uh, last year, last year's spring release, we actually did uh, Calvados cask. So we did a, a whiskey called Appleblom, uh, and we used uh, obviously this. This was before the SWA have just changed the rules on the casks mm. that can be used. So now Scottish distillers can use uh, Calvados cask as well. But uh, last year that wasn't the case, mm -hmm. uh, and we released uh, last spring. We released Appleblom, uh, which used their uh, Calvados casks, uh, and that is a, a very very enjoyable jam indeed. Yeah, I I'm, I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to uh, drop them in it. But before the SWA released um, or lifted that regulation, there was yes. a distillery that did a Calvados cask. I <clears> had the, the luck of trying it and I fell in love. Oh, and nice. then when I realized I couldn't get it again, I, my heart was broken. So yeah. if uh, Sweden's able to do that, and maybe now Scotland as well, but you guys got there first officially. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, that's exciting. Definitely, definitely. So, uh, so I mean that, that that's one good thing that, that we do at MacMeda is our the casks that we can use because mm -hmm. we're not we're not shackled as as it is by the uh, by the SWA. Yeah. Uh, we follow a lot of the rules of Scotch uh, for aging, the obviously the oak cask storage, all that sort of good thing. Um, but yeah, we're not we're not we're not restricted on the casks that we can use. Mm. Uh, we even did we even did a release I can't remember the name of it now uh, with birch sap wine. Right. Okay. So, yeah, so Another took, exotic took somebody, Swedish product. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so somebody took uh, sap from a birch tree, made it into a wine, mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we reused the casks once they were finished with them to, uh, to age some whiskey. And what kind of character did that bring to the dram? Very, it's, it's, it's difficult to describe. <laughs> um, I'm not a great one for tasting notes anyway, because everybody will, will pick up something different. Um, it was one I had to try a few times uh, mm. to try and get my head around it a little bit, really, because uh, a, a lot of the stuff that we do, it's like, well, it's, ne it's never been done before, really. Um, so some of it you, you're, you're expecting, you know, I, I come from a, a traditional Scotch drinking background, as it were. Mm. So we're not used to some of these flavours. So it's like on the first try of it, it's like, wow, what, what, is, that, what is it going on here? Yeah. You know, and, it, and, it, and it, some of it doesn't work sometimes. Uh, but, you know, that's the good thing about whiskey. There, there are a lot of distilleries. There are a lot of things we can do with it. Nothing's going to tick everybody's boxes mm. all, all the time. You know, there's sometimes you're going to get something. You go, you know what? That doesn't do it for me. But I like the idea. I like the innovation that's gone into it. Mm. That's, it's, it, it's, it's good that you do have the opportunity for the innovations. But also, it sounds like, you know, not taking the piss. Kind of uh, staying... Yeah in the regulations of what we recognize to be whiskey. Um, with regard to that, how much has Magmira looked back to Scotland? How much research into Scotch happened before Magmira started? Oh, a lot, a lot. So the, so the guys that started Magmira actually come to Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, did some distillery visits, etc. Uh, and then when they employed our uh, master blender, Angela Berazio, she was actually a student of Jim McEwen. 
Aha, okay. Illustrious name. Uh, yeah, exa well, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't get much bigger in the world of uh, making a whiskey than gin, does it really? Do you know what I mean? Uh, well, for the guys that are still around anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Jim, Jim obviously taught Angela, uh, and obviously with her own interests and her own backgrounds of stuff. Um, yeah, so we follow Scottish, the, the Scottish ways, as it were, um, a lot. But when it comes to things, you know, prime example is our, is our new release green tea. You know, we don't have to be shackled by what the SWA say. Uh, so while, you know, the distilling principles are there, uh, etc., cetera, uh, and obviously maturation times, all that sort of good thing, uh, we use a lot of obviously traditional casks that, uh, that, that the rest of the Scotch whiskey industry use as well. Mm. Um, yeah, so we do, we do follow it quite a lot. Uh, but obviously, we, we, we get away with uh, a certain few things that, uh, that we wouldn't do if we were a Scotch whiskey distillery. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now, one thing that I've noticed, just anecdotally, is the further north you go in Europe, the smokier people seem to like their whiskey. Does that mean that every release from Macmira is going to be a heavy smoke bomb? Most certainly not, no. The majority of our whiskey is non-peated, uh -huh. believe it or not. But uh, we do use uh, a traditional Swedish technique for our, uh, for our peating process, for our peated whiskies. So our Svensk Rook uh, is Swedish smoke. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, it's spelled R-O-K, but it's got the two funny little dots above the O. So it turns into more like a... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So that's a Svensk Rook. Uh, and that's, our, that's our, um, our main line when it comes to... Uh, peated whiskey mm. uh, so we use locally sourced peat nice. uh, there are there are peat bogs in sweden and what we also do is we work with the forestry commission etc mm. uh, and the energy companies uh, when they're uh, clearing juniper bushes mm -hmm. uh, from power lines uh, from railway tracks etc they actually deliver what they get to us and uh, we use a layer of juniper twigs mm. over the top of the peat uh, which gives it that, that a really good smoke and that traditional. So uh, a lot of foods are smoked in Sweden uh, um, and in that part of the world in general, but obviously for longevity, for flavor, et cetera. Uh, and they use a lot of juniper uh, for that smoking process. So it's something, uh, something a little bit of, a little bit quirky that we do. We have a layer of juniper twigs over the top of the peat uh, to, to, infuse the, to infuse the barley, which we do on site ourselves as well. Fantastic. And again, familiar, but different. And yes, maybe also much. a possible in for seasoned gin drinkers who might catch that little whiff of juniper and think, okay, yeah. I think I can get into this. So we, we, we have our own gins as well. We do, we produce two gins at our original distillery, the Lab Distillery mm -hmm. uh, in McNear the Brook. Uh, so we've got the Lab Gin and we have Creator, which is a little bit stronger, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more complex. Mm. Uh, but also we, we do with the juniper uh, locally juniper we have uh, our own gins as well so perfect and back to the cast for a moment and if we haven't hammered this home enough this is a swedish whiskey so um can you order flat pack whiskey casks from ikea <laughs> of course you can get anything from ikea <laughs> but like everything good from ikea they come with a couple of extra staves left over <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. No, but yeah, all, every, every order a couple of extra barrels <laughs> Exactly, exactly. No, but uh, something we do as well is our own private casks uh, that people can buy. Uh, they can choose from a ready-made recipe already, uh, and we, we take that whiskey, we bottle it, uh, and send it to you. Uh, we also uh, can work with a customer as well, uh, and they can choose their own, uh, their own recipe to make their 30-litre cask, basically. Mm. So we can have it smoked, non-smoked, the, the type of barley used, the type of cask we can use. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's pretty good, actually. It's pretty yeah. good. This actually um, seems to be something that Macmura is becoming quite famous for, is the creation of whiskey through alternative means. So here you talk about your customers being able to create their own whiskey, um, yeah. but you've also in the past uh, done your innovative whiskey created by AI. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, working with uh, a program from Microsoft, uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, um, we basically inputted uh, a lot uh, of information uh, using our own recipes, uh, things, um, feedback from people, uh, what, what people like in, in whiskies, what they like, 
taking stuff from literature that's out there, um, Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible being one of them, mm-hmm. taking some of the information and the scores from that and feeding it in. And then computers spat out something like 20 million uh, varieties of recipe. Uh, right. we, we, we took the top lot, uh, basically, uh, and made, made them up. Uh, mm-hmm. And Angela obviously chose the, the final one. So while well, the, the recipes were spat out by a computer, etc., uh, it was actually chosen by, by a human. I don't think that's ever going to get replaced, really. Yeah, the computer's not going to be able to taste what it's made. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what looks good on paper uh, might not actually work in real life. Well, uh, maybe this is prying behind the scenes, but out of the recipes that were chosen and tasted by humans, were there any duds in there? Were there any recipes where it was just like, oh, we can't do that? Or did they all actually have a bit of star quality to them? Uh, I think just because of the way we do whiskey, I think a lot of them had a bit of star quality behind them. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not privy at the moment to the, to the inner workings of the R&D bit that <laughs> went on behind that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Right, let me familiarise myself with my script again. Sorry, John. Eh. Oh, yeah, never mind. I've already talked about that. Ah, it's not innovative whiskey. It's intelligence whiskey. I might, yes, uh, intelligence, I, might yeah. uh, I might do a little bit to, um, yeah, to, to, to repronounce that. I don't want to be saying the wrong thing on camera. Yeah, so uh, A A zero one is intelligence. So uh, with zero one, I imagine we will produce a zero two at some point. Hmm. So let's see. Um, okay, wait back. So I'll um, I'll just re-record that question. Don't feel that you have to answer it, but I'll re-record mm-hmm. the question so uh, um, I say the right thing. Um, so one thing I notice is that Macmura likes to have alternative creative routes to making its whiskey. You've talked about allowing your customers to customize the whiskey that they would like to make, but you've also relied on AI to create whiskeys in the Intelligence series. Can you yeah, say so, about uh, that? Yeah, and then, yeah, sure. Cool. And uh, yeah, and then I think we'll just cut your answer back. So I've, I've, I've actually got a little bit of blurb that my boss wrote, which I think is quite good, which would probably be a better answer to your question. Actually, Sam, if you want me to. Okay, to I'll, then I'll lead with, can you tell me a bit more about that? So, um, can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So we love experimentation and uh, whether we see it or not, artificial intelligence is all around us. Uh, so we thought it would be fun to see what happened. Uh, and the whiskey is pretty good to that come out of it. <laughs> computers, computers would likely never replace people uh, in the blending process, really, mm-hmm. Sam. Uh, but they can be useful, uh, like in all professions, uh, to save time. So the AI recipe was based uh, on data from dozens of Angela's recipes, which were made with whiskies uh, that were a result of dozens of other human decisions, such as how to grow the barley, uh, which tree to harvest, uh, as well as data derived from the reactions of humans who tasted them. Uh, mm-hmm. So it really, all it really did was uh, bring together and simplify thousands of uh, human responses, uh, responding to changes in taste, uh, having new ideas for products, will always come from, from people. Yeah. really from, from, from the guys in the R&D department, from Angela, uh, from our sales feed, as brand of us is feeding back of what we get from customers, etc. Uh, but I think, you know, that's what we think at the moment, but who knows, maybe AI will help us uh, create the perfect whiskey for every individual whiskey lover uh, as time goes on, you know, the, the, the robots are rising potentially. <laughs> yeah, that's what we always want, AI to be in a helping capacity, but keeping yeah. us with the final decision making. <laughs> oh, Definitely. So that, that's what the AI process did for us there, really. But modern in lots of other ways, um, Macmura is quite eco-smart in the way that you make whiskies as well. Yes. So um, in, 2000, uh, yeah, in 2011, mm. uh, 2011, we actually moved from Macmura Brook uh, and built a gravity distillery just down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we roughly use... Um, only about 45 to 50 percent uh, energy uh, to what our traditional layout uh, distillery uses. Uh, we've got a, so we don't ship anything offsite either. We've got a biomass boiler mm-hmm. uh, to heat to, that's stored in heated water, so that provides heating for the distillery and for the process. 
uh, and we have uh, a biomass burner as well. So any leftover gets fed into the digesters, etc., and that out helps us produce uh, produce energy. So that's a, a, a zero carbon footprint um, burner. It's uh, innovation on top of innovation. Yeah. And in your maturation as well. Now, in Scotland, we're deeply into our dunnage warehouses and the great racks of casks. And Magmira has moved this underground, 50 meters underground into a disused yeah. mine. How did that happen? Yeah, so uh, it's not a traditional mine as you might think. There's no, <laughs> no like, it's not, it's not like covered in coal dust or anything like that. But uh, it was good luck and local knowledge, really. Uh, but underground larders have always been used in Sweden to store food mm -hmm. as they maintain a steady temperature. Long uh, winters as well, yeah. yeah. So you'll need storage. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so they keep a steady temperature that's warmer than above ground. Uh, during the winter so nothing freezes and cooler during the summer uh, so things well, do what fridges are supposed to do stay cool really uh, the bodice mine has a temperature that never goes above 10 degrees uh, and doesn't drop below seven degrees so there's only a three degree fluctuation there hmm. uh, which is you know so i mean that doesn't cut down on the angel share or anything like that uh, but what it does by storing it down there the angel share has nowhere to go <laughs> right. So, so, so you walk angels, into that little underground chamber and you're swimming in yeah, alcohol vapor. <laughs> yeah. So um, imagine going into into a normal distillery warehouse yeah. uh, and, and you get that, that big waft anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm told by the guys that I've been, I've not managed to go over yet, but I've been told by the guys that go over, it's, um, it's pretty intense. <laughs> it's pretty intense. Wow. So um, that's a, that's a non-traditional way of taking in whiskey, but I think I'd like to round out by asking, in Sweden, what is the right way to drink a whiskey? Same as everywhere else. Mm. Most importantly, with good company. Perfect. I think... so, yeah, so there's no, there's no traditional Swedish uh, ritual or anything like that. Uh, we'll say skål as opposed to slanger. Uh, but yeah, but, but sharing a bottle with friends is, uh, is definitely the way. Perfect. Well... Mickey Plummer, thank you very much for talking to us today. That was absolutely enlightening. And um, without a whiskey in my hand, I hope it's not bad luck, but skull. Schlange. <laughs> yeah. ah, perfect. Okay, I'll shut off the recordings. Um, did we cover everything there?